Hi, it's Robin. I have here I am the C64, a tutorial series on the Commodore 64 computer. There's quite the robot, and what does he say on him there? And I will teach you how to use your Commodore 64 computer. So what's going on here? He is the C64, or this is, or he's teaching us how to use this, or... That's a little bit confusing, but okay. And it's a complete six-volume set, double-sided diskette by Creative Software. I haven't seen packaging quite like this for the C64 before. Well, that's kind of hard to make out there, but it says Creative Software. Kind of embossed on there. There's the spine. I am the C64. On the back, here is a set of tutorial programs to help you get the most out of your Commodore 64. Written by the Pauhokis. Maybe a pair of brothers or something. That was kind of common. Okay, and there's six volumes here. Overall introduction to the C64. Introduction to the keyboard. Introduction to the basic programming language. Advanced basic programming techniques. Sprite graphics and music and sound effects. Each operation you can perform is explained in simple terms right on the screen. This is licensed from Microvision and Sound, and that's creative software. This packaging is kind of reminding me maybe of the Sega Saturn packaging. I'm going to go find one of those. Here's one. I guess it's not super similar, but kind of. We'll look inside. How do we open this thing? <laughs> He's got, oh, there. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's some instructions in here. Congratulations, you have just purchased the most complete tutorial series available for your Commodore 64 computer. Volumes uh, 1 through 3 are on side A, and volume 4, 5, 6 are on side B. To get started, turn the computer and disk drive on, insert the diskette into the drive. To use any volume type, load volume, bracket, <laughs> space, bracket, number desire. Okay, I guess we don't do that literally. And press return. After the program has been loaded and the computer shows ready, type run and return to start the program. All the instructions are contained in the program, so you'll be guided every step of the way. Refer to the Commerce 64 manual as you use the programs so as to get the greatest benefit from both. When each volume is finished, it automatically leads to the other volumes by prompting you with load volume cursor, <laughs> quote, comma A. Simply press the number of the volume you want and press return. When the program is finished loading, type run and return. Okay, and I guess that's about it. There is a 90-day limited warranty here. Copyright notice 1984. Oh. And nothing inside. Okay. okay. And also inside is the disc here. It says copyright 1983, Microvision and Sound. And like a lot of these discs, it's the uh, the glue, the adhesive, eats through the label and gives it this blotchy look. The Atari 2600 cartridges that Activision made are really bad for that. Okay, and so yeah, like they were saying, volumes 1 to 3... For use on the Commodore Dash 64. Commodore Dash 64 is a trademark of Commodore Electronics. I, I've never seen it with the Dash in the full name before. And there's volumes four through six on the back side. And what else is in here? Creative software. Showing the other products here. Creative Writer, Filer, and Calculator. You can get all three productivity programs for $99.95 on the C64. Well, or $199.95 if it's for the Apple II or the IBM PC. Nice. <laughs> Is it that much better on those? And what else do they have? Trolls and Tribulations. I don't know if I've ever played that. I've heard of that game before. Roll Call USA Warp. Chinese Juggler, Break Street, Easy Disc now with Super Key. I am the C64. Oh, they're claiming it's the number one bestseller for over 18 months. 
Huh. Creative finance. <laughs> Sounds like some accountants. Personal musician and new air defense. Hmm. I actually don't know many of those programs. There's a chart showing all the different programs available. And if they're available for C64, IBM, and Apple II, oh, or even Macintosh. Oh, and they had one available for the Atari 800, Tools and Tribulations. Yeah, check out how the IBM and Apple versions are so much more than the C64. All right, so I'll set up the C64 and we'll give this a try. And I don't know how long this will take. I might run through all six volumes if they aren't too long. I think I'll do some running commentary on this. I haven't actually checked this out myself yet. If you don't want to hear my commentary, check my second channel. I'll upload the raw capture from the C64 in case you just want to experience it for yourself without me blabbing in the background. Okay, I've got the bread bin set up. And we'll give this a try. Look at the disc here. All right, and like it said, three volumes, one program each. So they appear to be single load. And we'll go ahead and load volume one. I do have my Super Snapshot cartridge in just to speed up the loading. And we'll go ahead and run it. Actually, I'm curious, is it a basic program? Yep. <laughs> That's a lot of data statements. Probably for graphics, so there's some music data. Yeah, it looks like some sprites. Okay, anyway, we won't spoil it. Run. Creative Software presents I Am. Cool. <laughs> That's like there's copy protection or something. <laughs> okay, what's it going to do here? Just waiting a while. Okay. Oh, there we go, music. Creative Software Presents, I Am the C64, Volume 1, Copyright 1983, written by the Paholkis. Okay. At any point in this program, you may push any of the following keys. F1 to view the previous page, Q to quit, or S to stop a song. This volume is an introduction to the capabilities of the Commodore 64. It will take about 10 minutes to complete this volume. Okay, so we'll see how these go. I'll I'll run them in full if it's not taking too long. Or if it's not too boring. Hi, I am your Commerce 64. I am the most sophisticated home computer. I can be programmed to do almost anything you can imagine. And there's a guy dreaming about what is that? Some kind of duck? Or a key? Or actually it reminds me a bit of the Defender spaceship, but <laughs> way uglier. Press any key to continue. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I guess it was the Defender ship. In addition to data processing, like phone lists or recipe files, one of the things I do best is draw pictures. These pictures are called sprites. I can display up to eight sprites at one time. Actually, it can display way more than that. It's got eight hardware sprites, but they can all be reused. You can have eight on one line, on one horizontal line, but you can put stack them with, well, various ways. Okay, press A key to continue. I guess this C64 is unaware of all it can do. Sprites can be moved anywhere on the screen. Oh. <laughs> they can be moved in front or behind one another. I know when sprites collide with each other or other objects. On the following page, sprites and text graphics are combined to form a complete work of art. 
Well, those are some interesting cars, I guess. Yeah, sprites can be moved in front of or behind one another. Actually, the priority of sprites is uh, is hardwired, so it's sort of incorrect to say they can be moved in front of or behind each other. You can redefine a sprite so it looks like another sprite that goes behind one, but you can't actually change the priority of them. Anyway, I'll try not to be super pedantic. Press any key to continue. So here is one beautiful work of art. And there's all those sprites that were defined. I guess it's showing the tree is in front of the house, but no, I don't see any sprites moving in front of or behind any other. <laughs> that balloon. I don't know if you do this, but whenever there is an anime picture, even a modern game, I don't know if it's like Professor Layton or something on the 3DS, it would have these cutscenes, but they would have a bit of movement to them just to make them more interesting like this. And so I'd always wait to see like what would happen if if it reaches the edge. Uh, do I have anything else to talk about? I want to see what happens when this balloon reaches the edge. Maybe I will fast forward a little bit. Here it goes. What's it going to do? <laughs> Come on. Uh, oh! <laughs> so it kind of wrapped around, but it probably only wrapped around to X coordinate 255, and uh, which doesn't reach the far right side of the screen. <laughs> anyway, okay, press A key, continue. My sprites are high resolution graphics. They can also be expanded to twice their original size. On the next screen, all of my artistic talents are combined to create arcade style graphics. Okay, so those little men are expanding in the X, the X and the Y and the Y. And that all looks correct. I don't know why they change color too. My sprites are high resolution graphics. I don't know why, like sprites can be in two different modes. There's what we call high res, which are 24 pixels by 21 pixels, and they're just monochrome. Each pixel is either on or off. And then there's also multicolor sprites, which this doesn't seem to account for, where each pair of pixels can be used as like one of four, well, three colors plus transparent. And each of those pairs of pixels are twice as wide as a high-res pixel. Anyway, okay. Let's see all the artistic talents combined here. Valkyrie's Revenge, no apostrophe. I don't know if it's... What the Valkyrie case, something, we're waiting for something. Oh, oh, music in the background. So that's like that Defender ship. Oh, some little guys dropping down. Shoot. Get him! Why are you just sitting there? <laughs> I don't know why that green defender ship just sat there. As you may have noticed, I also have an ear for music. Oh, Michael Royer. I also have an ear for music. Okay. I don't take requests, but I'll sing anything you can teach me. I have three independent voices which can be played one at a time or any combination. Each voice has a nine octave piano range. Oh, those independent voices can be played one at a time or in combination. Good. I can generate four different waveforms for sound. This means I can simulate any musical instrument or any sound effect. <laughs> Those are like steamboats changing their Y size, row your boat ashore. I thought that was about a rowboat, not a steamboat. Okay, for professional quality sound, I can be connected to almost any high quality sound system, 
See Volume 6 of the Advanced Series for more detail. Okay, well, I don't know that the four different waveforms of the C64 are enough to simulate any musical instrument or any sound effect, but anyway, the SID, the SID of course, is really good. All right, is it thinking? Press any key to continue. Oh, this is the end of Volume 1. Press any key to quit. That wasn't 10 minutes, was it? Even waiting for that balloon, I don't think, made us wait 10 minutes. Press any key to quit. Do you want to quit? <laughs> no. Press any key to quit. Do you want to quit? <laughs> okay. Yes. Press 2 to load Volume 2. Press 3 to load Volume 3. That cursor sure is flashing fast. Okay, so I'll press 2 to load it. Well, now we have to press return, but it doesn't say that. Sorry about being so pedantic. Okay, run. No, I'm not. Run. Okay, we're down one. Creative Software presents I Am the C64 Volume 2. Well, there it goes again. So this is like... I think this has copy protection. Uh, this video is going to be long enough just looking at the content of it, but I will look at this after, and if it has anything interesting going on, uh, you know, then I'll do a video about that. All right. Okay. And again, same instructions. Oh, except it doesn't give the option to stop the music. This volume is an introduction to the C64 keyboard. It will require about 10 minutes. Okay. Now that you know what I am capable of doing, let's get to work. First, I want to teach you how to use my keyboard. Take a few minutes to look at my keys. Okay, there's a diagram of the keys. And it's got these hollow squares where the, you know, the special function keys are. Funny that shift lock, uh, it's not outlined. It just has it as a normal key on the computer screen. But the cursor keys restore, yeah, I guess all the rest of them. For the most part, my keyboard is similar to a standard typewriter keyboard. Also, I have keys that do special things. These keys are flashing. Not that one. Okay. Let's start with my keys in general. Most keys have three markings on them, such as the S key shown here. Yeah, S. <laughs> I like the the perspective of that is skewed a uh, little left. Shouldn't be a little right. Oh, well, yeah, it does accurately have the Petsky symbols there of the heart and the bottom left corner there. Press the S key to continue. Okay. Whoop, beep. Okay, S. Holding down the shift key and pressing the S key will display the symbol on the right side of the key. So shift on the right side of the face of the key. Okay, let's try that. Shift S. Oh, there's a little heart. Holding Commodore and pressing S will display the symbol on the left side of the key. Okay, yep, that should press that little cornery thing. Yep, there it is. Holding shift and pressing Commodore is used to change letters from upper to lowercase and vice versa. Try it now. Okay, so I'll press those together. Oh, well, let's try using right shift. Ooh, there it is. Yep. Other keys have markings only on the top of the key. Examine the cursor keys located at the lower right of the keyboard. These keys control the cursor. The cursor is the flashing box you see next to the question mark. Okay. So I'm examining them. The cursor keys are used to move the cursor down or right. Holding shift and pressing a cursor key will move the cursor up or left. Now try moving the cursor. Oh, there we go. I'm moving it right. I'm moving it down. I'm moving it up. Okay, what happens if we move to the bottom of the screen? Whoa, this is slow. Oh, it won't let us. Oh, it's so slow. 
Hey, I'm great. I gotta move to the bottom right and see what happens. Oh, it wraps around. Okay, press A key to continue. The insert slash delete key is used to delete a letter. Holding shift and pressing insert delete allows you to insert a letter in the middle of a line. Practice on this. Okay, so we'll insert and put an E on shift to insert this mistake. There, did I get it right? Next to inst delete, instant delete is the clear home key. Pressing this key will place the cursor at the top left of the screen. Try it now. Okay. I did. Oh. <laughs> Holding down shift and pressing clear home will clear the screen and place the cursor in the top left of the screen. Try it now. Nope. Don't like that. Okay. Shift. Clear. Okay. I did it. My control key is located second row far left, is used to control the screen. Okay. Control is used to slow down the listing of programs. Press any key to continue. My color keys are located in the top row of the keyboard. All letters printed after holding control and pressing a color key will appear in the color selected. Beep. Oh, I didn't expect it to continue. My reverse keys are next to the color keys. Holding control and pressing reverse on will make the printing appear in reverse. Okay. Really, it's holding control and pressing the nine key that will then activate the reverse on. They're, they're being a bit inconsistent here since they were including the shifted or control part. Anyway, whatever. Okay. Try the reverse keys now. Control on. Oh, there. And control off. Uh, the four keys at the right of the keyboard are the programmable function keys. These keys are used during a program to perform special functions. For example, in this program, the F1 key is programmed to go back a page. Yeah, F1 is backwards. Oh, and it did do it. So we'll just press A key and continue. Use the return key to tell me something. This can be a direct command such as load or run, or a statement in a program such as 10 print, we're almost done. The run slash stop key is on the left of the keyboard, it is used to stop the execution of a basic program. Shift and run stop will load a program from tape. More specifically, it will load and run a program from tape. That's why it says run on it. Okay, press A key, continue. Holding run stop, where the slash go, and pressing restore will return the machine to normal. Ooh, music. <laughs> I'm a graduate. This will also stop some programs written in machine language. You are now a graduate, not just me, you too, of I am the C64 Volume 2. You are now ready for Volume 3. Do Yay. It's that graduation music. <laughs> okay, press any key to quit. Oh, it's got a little Commodore symbol there. It's a registered trademark of Commodore business machines. Do you want to quit? I it says press any key to quit, but really it's press any key to be asked if you want to quit. And if you want to quit, yeah, we do. Okay, and let's load volume three. And again, pressing three isn't enough to load up. We also have to press return. Okay, now let's try running it. I am the C64 Volume 3, copyright 1983, written again by the Pole Keys. Whoa. <laughs> That's hilarious. Come on. Oh, there we go. Oh. 
Oh, that was a short tune for Volume 3. Is it automatically advancing or not? I put in this program. Oh, S to stop a song is once again here. This volume is an introduction to basic programming. It will require about 20 minutes to complete. Okay, let's see if it really does. Once again, this is your C64 at your service. In this volume, we will discuss how you can talk to me. First, there is something you should understand. I am only a machine to be used as your tool. Remember, I can do nothing without you. Camp Basic. Fun, fun, fun. Oh, and there's the guy with his trumpet that we just heard. Or bugle. Being a computer, I am a very hard worker, but I only follow instructions. Think of me as your worker who needs instructions. You can give me a list of instructions to follow, or you can give me instructions one at a time. Ready. A list of instructions is called a program. Each instruction or line must have a line number to tell me the order in which to do the instructions. When I am running a program, I am in program mode. Press return to run program. Okay, so there's x equals 4 plus 7, and print x should print 11. Oh, 11. So what is that that C64 is doing there? Oh, well, 11. Oh, press space to view the next page. Whoops. When I am performing instructions as you give them to me, I am in immediate mode. Always press return after immediate instruction. Okay, he's going to throw that like ninja star again. <laughs> print A. Okay, and it printed an A. Press space to view the next one. Ooh, it's going to print a B. <laughs> To follow the instructions, they must be written in a language that I understand. The language I use most often is called BASIC. BASIC is an English-like language, with a few exceptions. If I do not understand the instruction, I will tell you by indicating a syntax error. What is 7 plus 4? Syntax error. Print command is used to display, not the print command. Print command is used to display information on the screen. Information placed between quotes, shift 2, will be printed exactly as you typed it. Print hello, and it'll do hello, ninja. Also, print can be used to perform calculations in immediate mode. BASIC uses all the standard operations with a few exceptions. Plus means add, minus means subtract. Asterisk is the multiplic multiplication sign. Slash is the division sign. The up arrow is used to raise a number to a power exponent. Example number one is print 2 plus 2. Ninja star 4. 5 minus 3. Two. Two times three, ninja star, six. How things are printed can be controlled by using a comma or semicolon. Semicolon will cause printing in the next available space. Comma will cause printing in the next available column. Each column is ten spaces wide. Print can be abbreviated by using a question mark. Example. E Z and just star Bing Easy will print it with those columns between yep. Cursor, color, and other control keys can be enclosed in quotes. They will be represented as graphic symbols. For example, cursor down will appear as Q. Shift clear slash home appears as heart. Print heart. Mary Q. Jones down, 301 Cherry Lane down, down, anywhere USA. Press return, ninja star. Yep, I think that looks right. List is used to list the lines of a program. You can specify either the line number or the range of line numbers to be listed. List. That, of course, is assuming that you already had that program in memory. Okay. List 10. G. 20 or 30. That's easy. It's easy. Whoops. 
often is convenient to represent numerical information as a variable. A variable may be one letter, two letters, or one letter and a number. x equals 7 plus 4, print space x. 11. Ooh, space x! Elon Musk sighting. Example number two, x1, y1, and z1 equals x1 plus y11. xx equals 7. Everything equals 11. Other information, such as letters and graphics, are represented as string variables. A string variable has a dollar sign after its name. Strings must be enclosed in quotes. Well... Okay. Hello. Constant string data must be enclosed in quotes. I mean, there's the character string. There's, there's other functions you can use. Well, anyway. Okay, E1. Employee number. Yeah. Grr equals GR string. Okay, fair enough. If then, I can make decisions using the if then statement. If the condition is true, then I will follow the instructions. If the statement is false, then I go to the next line number. All right, so y equals 15 will not be printed. Yeah. These are the operators that can be used with the if dot 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 then statement. That's a bit better putting those dots in there. Greater than or equal, less than or equals, equals, less than, greater than, not equal. And there's an example. X is greater than five. Oh yeah, and it's not equal five. <laughs> Oops. Well, C64, you're smarter than me. If two or more conditions are separated by and, and all conditions are true, then I will complete the line. If two or more conditions are separated by OR and any conditions are true, then I will complete the line. Okay. Ooh. Blackjack. Ninja Star. All right. Go to. When I receive this instruction, I will go space to the specified line number. Line 40. That is so many spaces. Okay. Ooh. Wow. Huh, it didn't mention that go to does not require the space uh, between the words go and to. A group of statements can be repeated using the for next loop. Choose a number from one to three. Okay, let's try zero. Nope, let's try four. Nope. Okay, well, we'll do two. All right. To enter a line into a program, be sure to include a line number and press return at the end of the line. Lines may be up to two screen lines in length. Two statements can be on the same line if they are separated by a colon. Yeah. Each line may contain up to 80 characters to screen lines. Yeah. The uh, C64 user's guide actually calls that, you know, physical or screen lines versus logical basic lines. It would probably be good if they clarify that a bit better, but whatever. If you retype or edit a program line and press return, I will automatically substitute the retyped or edited line to delete a program line, type the line number, and press return. Pint. Hello. Error. Okay. There we go. And press return to run the program. Press return to continue. Okay, just to erase line 20 and run. Remarks can be added to a program by using the remark statement, remark statement. The computer will ignore anything on the line after rem. All right, so line 10 is going to get ignored. These few simple commands can be combined to form very powerful programs. Even simple movement can be easily achieved. Consider this. Printing in a loop from line 20, 40, delaying. Those next TMs and BLs aren't really necessary. They slow things down a bit. 
Uh, you can just say next still automatically do the next loop. It's funny how a bunch of basic books did that exact same problem like that. They specified doing when you have nested loops that they would specify the names of the variables. And really that was just like a waste of, they may a bit slower, use more memory. Anyway, experimenting with what you have learned is the best way to improve. Remember, you can't hurt the computer by typing on it. Well, if I type with my fists, I could. Most of all, use your imagination and remember to have fun, lots of exclamation marks. End of volume three, go on to I Am the C64, volumes four to six, advanced series. All right. I'm curious if we'll get that quit screen again. <laughs> I wonder if this is going to end. Oh yeah. Press A key to be asked if you oh, index introduction hard worker. That's funny. We quit and instead it brought up this index. Enter page. Okay, now we can really cue to quit. And then do you want, <laughs> do you want to quit? No. I like that. Okay, well, yeah, yes, I do want to quit. Load volume. Okay, well, let's try the other side of the disk here. Let's see if it works just typing in volume four. No, it won't let us. It wants us just to type one or two, but I am going to sneakily type four. Does it work? Yep. I am the 64 volume four. Let's hear that formatting sound. <laughs> and we're waiting. Okay, so we're onto the advanced volumes. Thirty minutes. Okay, so I am going to split this up into multiple videos. Thanks to my patrons for their support. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back shortly with part two where we look at the advanced volumes in this. All right, talk to you later. I did.